heaven and earth, come and preside over these deliberations, so that those that make the decisions may be guided by your wisdom. Thank you. Roll call, Ms. Payne. Mr. Barrett. Here. Mr. Belishko. Here. Mr. Marconi. Here. Ms. Gilbert and Brad is excused. Mr. Brooks. Here. Also in attendance is Mayor George Brown, Administrator Charles McCormick, Police Chief Joe Coppy, Assist Administrative Assistant Lisa Sanfilippo. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's regular session of City Council. Please turn off all cell phones. Following are examples of some important council rules not intended to be a complete list. Please adhere as closely as possible to the five minute speaker presentation time limit. All remarks should be addressed to the council and not to any individual member. No persons are allowed to address the council from beyond the rail except the speaker at the dais who has the floor. Chairperson shall preserve order and decorum and prevent attacks on personalities. Chairperson shall determine all points of order. No person except city officers or the representatives shall be permitted within the rail during any meeting without the express permission of council. And finally, when members of administration are speaking, please stand up and speak into the microphone. Good. Thank you, Ms. Payne. Okay, folks, we have um, 11 items that are on the agenda. Does anyone want to make any comments on those 11 agenda items? Tony, is that one about the parking on there? Down by Wall Street? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Bob Kalabaski, I just wanted to say one thing about that. Uh, why, did this, why did the zoning board allow that place to get put in there? I mean, I used to tow cars there all the time. But why, are, why, you know, why did they let it go in there without proper parking? That's what I don't understand. And you know, I don't know what this is gonna do to people who have owned houses and apartments down, down in that area now. But to me, it makes no sense. Why did they let them put that building there with no parking? So I only have an eighth grade education, but sometimes I think of things. And that just dawned on me, like why would you put this basically high rise with no parking? So uh, did you talk to any of the people who it's gonna bother with them all parking on the street? I wonder if you talked to any of those people. So I guess that's all I got to say for now. So the, um, the building in question does come with parking. The um, building manager who was here uh, a couple weeks ago, or at least the last council meeting, uh, talked to everyone on that half block that we're expanding it to. Okay, uh, there's nothing you could do anything you're gonna do it, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. why, did, you know, why did they let it go through? There's no parking, it doesn't make sense. Anyone else want to comment on pending legislation? Sorry. Yes, uh, Jerry. Tax claim issue. Is there a dollar amount on, on that, um, what, this, what the city expects to get annually, or does it vary? And where would that item be included in the budget under what revenue uh, line item? Also, the uh, American Rescue Plan funds, are these all approved uses? Yes, Jerry, they're, they're all approved uses according to the guidelines that we were given. That we were given an initial set of guidelines, and uh, we were told adhere to the guidelines from the first set, and we're okay to use it. This is under policing. So, it, it, yes, it, it is. Uh, one's under tourism, the ice rink is under tourism, the police part is under policing. But, yeah, they are uh, adhering to the guidelines of the American Recovery Plan now. In the tax claim, is, is that an annual uh, line item revenue that you include in the budget, or how's that? I think if you could, I, I, I'm almost 100% sure it is, yeah. but, uh, and it's a variable number, but if you, if you email me, okay. I'll have Brett, Brett's not yeah. available tonight. But okay, but it's something you do? Um, yes, it, it's been going on for a couple of years okay. now, where you're selling on. All right. You get, you get a number instead of one claim, but I have to, uh, I'll have Brett, if you give me an email, Joe, yeah. I'll get Brett back to you. Okay, you comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on pending legislation, the 11 items? Yes. Angel, at this looks fair. Um, now, I have a question, because I see with the ice rink, 
for Public Square. That was actually fitted out through CoStar. But now with the police cruiser and the two Polaris vehicles, will those be bid out? Are those bid out through CoStar as well? I think we have it turned on for you. Okay. Um, the new vehicles, police vehicles, are co-stars. Okay. Okay. Um, the special vehicles that we're, we're calling them ATVs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, they are um, they were what they're called. They're called single source, which means that they're the only source of those materials. They're the only, okay. the only company that makes those materials. So they're called single source. They don't require bidding. Okay. They're, they're specialty items. Okay. And the, uh, I'll just give you the rest of them so you don't you know, worry about it. A police firing range, that was bid out. That went out for bid by Mark Barry. And then the um, weapons upgrades, we're talking about the, the pistols, uh, that's Coast Stars. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on pending legislation? John? John Toski, Elman Lane. Um, I think the ice, that ice rink's a good idea. So, like, once we purchase that, it's ours and we can set it up every year. Like, that, this isn't going to be just a one year thing. Um, and is it there much maintenance to it or no? Just you have to repurchase the ice or whatever, the not ice, ice. <laughs> Good question. Now, John, once we purchase it, it's ours. We'll, our DPW people will be responsible for installing it, taking it apart. We already identified an area it will be safely stored, so it won't be out in the open and no one can damage it. And then the maintenance, like I said, will be done by the DPW people, but it's very low maintenance. Uh, it's designed that way. And uh, did you have another question? Was that close question? No, that does. That's about it. Okay. Look forward to skating on it. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's a, something good. At least it'll bring people downtown. You know? that, that's the idea, is that we bring people downtown and maybe uh, somebody can, you know, have a hot chocolate there for them and, and frequent the, the businesses downtown and the restaurants. So it really is a great part of tourism. Anyone else have a question for pending legislation? Okay, we'll move into voting <coughs> of our regular meeting. Okay, so we need a motion and a second. We're going to do the resolutions as a consent agenda. We we'll need a motion and a second. Motion. Motion, Mr. Barrett. I'll second. And second, Mr. Belushko. And roll call, Mr. Barrett. Yes. Mr. Belushko. Yes. Mr. Marconi. Yes. Mr. Brooks. Yes. And um, the ordinance is also as a consent. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Motion by Mr. Marconi. I need a second. I'll second. Second, Mr. Belushko. And roll call, Mr. Barrett. Yes. Mr. Belushko. Yes. Mr. Marconi. Yes. Mr. Brooks. Yes. And the minutes. Motion and a second. <laughs> motion. Mr. Marconi. Second on the minutes. Second. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Yes. Mr. Belushko. Yes. Mr. Marconi. Yes. Mr. Brooks. Yes. Okay. All passed. All passed. Mm -hmm. uh, presentations again. Barrett, you're good. Uh, just to wish everybody a safe and happy holiday season and looking forward to uh, moving on. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, I'll echo uh, Bill's statements there. I wish everyone to have a happy Christmas and a good New Year. Thanks. Kind of works when you say it. Mr. Marconi? And the same as well, too. Uh, happy holidays uh, to everyone here uh, and all the uh, residents as well, too. Thank you. And same here. Merry Christmas to everyone and a happy New Year. It's been a very interesting year to manage it through COVID. And, um, on January 3rd, we swear in uh, Beth Gilbert as our next chair and Mike as um, the vice chair. Okay.
Public comments? Mr. Kalabowski? Phone going. Bob Kalabowski here at Wilkes-Barre City Council meeting today. Councilman Bill Barrett, senior member. Mr. Bullishko, our attorney, Ms. Collins. Mr. Brooks, Kathy Payne, our city clerk. <coughs> Mr. Bride is not here tonight. And Mr. Marconi. I'd just like to bring to council's attention that the video last week of this council meeting that went out live, thousands of people looked at that and there are outrage to think that what you people are doing, taking these health care benefits. Now, Mr. Marconi just acknowledged to me that he is going to be on the health care along with his wife for about $30,000 this coming year. And it's very nice that Mr. Marconi was praising the mayor on what we're doing here, but yet $30,000 a year to work part-time. From what I understand, Ms. McBride I'm not sure yet because Mr. Uh, Brett wasn't here this week to find out, but I understand that she's going to put her husband on. That'll be another $30,000 a year. Now, Mr. Belushko, I don't know if he'll answer us tonight, one of the most successful auto mechanics in South Wilkesbury, and a good mechanic, just so you know. I've taken cars there to him over the years. But is he going to give up his health care? We're going to find out in a few minutes. And also, Mr. Brooks, once again, I think you're a fine councilman. I know your heart's in the right place, but you're also greedy, is my personal opinion, by taking the buyout. And if you want to continue to be a councilman and represent this city, I highly advise to you to give it up. And also, I want a list for the next council meeting what you have done with the tens of thousands of dollars that you got in this buyout, or however how much it is, I want to know what charity you gave this money to. Because, like I said, you're using our money to make yourself look good instead of putting it back into the city coffers. And something I didn't realize, a businessman who I talked to is going to put money up to hire an attorney to get to the bottom of what, as I would consider, and Mr. Barrett, I think, believe, knows it, and other people know it, this pension scam where somebody like you, Mr. Brooks, could work here part-time and count it towards a full-time pension. It's outrageous. And I've told you, it's cost us, from what I understand, about two and a half million dollars for past council people, like Mangrenhausen, Kathy Kane, Tom McGrory, Tom Layton, Lee Naney, and McGrory. McGrory, guy who put us ten and a half million dollars in debt, has a pension, plus he's getting a $2,400 a year buyout from what I'm told. And there's only one person that I know that can stop this and who's going to have to help the taxpayers. And that's going to be the mayor of the city. We're going to give him the information and I'm going to also try to set a meeting up. We have, city, we have an attorney McCormick over here, we have Ms. Collins, and we got attorney Henry. We have to get to the bottom of this pension scam. And that's what this is, is a scam. Nobody to this day has showed me how you count part-time service towards a full-time pension. We are being robbed. 
And I, Mr. Marconi, I think you're a nice person and it's nothing personally. But as far as I'm concerned, it's outrageous that you're going to cost us $30,000 a year, especially your wife's on workers' comp. You're, I don't know why doesn't your job give you health care. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. And it's outrageous. And unfortunately, the mayor's going to be in the situation where he's going to have to go to PFM. He's going to have to go to the Auditor General's office. And also, I'm waiting for some, some documentation. I understand that there was some uh, illegal changes in the pension system from an, uh, uh, an, two administrations. Because I want to know, how could the last Tom Layton give himself a raise? You can't get a raise unless it's put on the ballot. That's what we have to find out. So I'm going to ask this again. I want, I want to poll you. What are you going to do? Is Mr. Belushko going to give up his health care, even though he's the most successful businessman in South Wilkesbury and an excellent mechanic? Is Mr. Brooks going to give up his health care and give it back to the taxpayers? Like I said, this administration took pay cuts. They're doing everything they could to keep this city afloat. And you people are absorbing the money. I don't know where Miss Bride McBride is, but I want to know what does her family have to do, and or her, his, or her, his wife, Mr. Marconi's wife. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kanabowski. Get thirty thousand dollars worth of health care. Tom Dombrowski. All right, hold on. I want to get my answers, Mr. Brooks. All right, you're going to take it. I give it away to charity. You know that. All right. Well, I want to know what charity, Mr. Belushko. Are you going to continue robbing the taxpayers? Because that's my personal opinion. You have your own business. You shouldn't be on health care. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Barrett, are you going to try to help us get this done next year? Because I would really appreciate your help. And okay, Mr. Marconi, uh, I'm, I'm really ashamed that you're taking $30,000 a year. And Ms. Ms. Payne, I'm just telling you something. What you let go on here last week, people talking from over the rail, you, you didn't say nothing when Ms. McBride was talking to people back there, but yet if I did it, I'd be thrown out of here. And also, Mr. Brooks, you had no right to throw Mr. Carr out of here. That was not a curse that he said to the mayor. But yet this guy could curse at a, a, a businessman, a taxpayer, and not even be reprimanded. Okay, we're going. Mr. Right. Dombrowski. Let's say, Chief, can he take me for riding cruiser for a little bit? <coughs> I settle down. Oh, let him dress. Oh, God, let's start finally. <laughs> At uh, the last council meeting, the uh, <clears throat> mayor was saying the city was considering using uh, some of the remaining, I think it was about $29 million in the American Rescue Plan funds to replace sewer lines. I was wondering, last year, before the COVID thing interrupted, uh, there was some thought on the table to uh, sell the city sewer system. And I think you had some offers. I don't remember exactly, anywhere between 30 and $50 million. And then there was supposed to be a public meeting, then it got canceled because of COVID, all that stuff. So I was wondering, is there any thought still at this point of selling the sewer system? A lot, a lot of towns have done it, you know. Okay. To, the, to the mayor, mm -hmm. I could ask sure. that one question. Are you, are you done with all your questions? Mm -hmm. That's the only question I'm gonna have. The rest is just uh, expanding on that a little bit, but okay. he could Wait. answer at the end if he wants to. He yeah, can. it's at the end. Go ahead, yeah, Tom. Fin you finish you the rest of your questions. You want to answer at the end? You want answer now? No, no, he'll answer at the end. Finish yeah. your questions. Do you have anything else you want to say, sir? Oh, I have other things to say, but no more questions. So, yeah. You want me to finish? No, finish your questions. Okay, yeah, all right. Or what you want to say. Okay, so here's what I was gonna say, because uh, Say hypothetically, you know, that if my number was approximately right, 30 to 50 million dollars is the range that you were offered last year, and there was no commitment made. But say, just pull a number out of the air, and say, say you sell them for 40 million dollars, right? And uh, you still have 29 million left in the American Rescue Plan funds, and no true commitment right at this moment in time. Although you were hypothesizing last council meeting about possibly using that for a sewer system, so. So if you take the 40 you sell it for, right, the 29 you still have left, you wouldn't have to do anything with the sewer lines if you take the 40, right? Now 40 and 29, now you got almost $70 million, right? So a city that some people try and say is possibly in a little bit of financial trouble, where there's no financial trouble then with 40 and 29, you see? You're out of financial trouble for 10 years at least, you know? So why not take that? If somebody offered me, if I own sewer lines, and somebody said to me, Tom, I'll offer you 30 to $40 million for your sewer lines within five minutes, I'm selling them, you know? 
It wouldn't take me very long, and I wouldn't even do the public meeting part. Not that I wouldn't want to, but when you have the COVID, you don't really have to do the public meeting. That's what each of these people are here for, the council members. <laughs> they represent each section of the city, just like with United States Congress people. They don't have public meetings at every congressional district about things they're going to vote on. Once in a while they might, but they don't do it on a regular basis. You know, I don't think it's necessary in this case where that much money we're talking about, 40 and 29, the city could use that 70 million, believe me, and you know as well as I. So what I was going to say was, if your concern was that you were going to maybe worry about what they might do when they become the owner, like say Pennsylvania American Water was one of those bidding. Say that they become the owner and you're concerned maybe you're going to double the rates on the residents or things like that, you could prevent that because you're the owner, you see. You could put a clause in the contract, and Maureen would know this, that says years one through ten you can't raise the price of the sewer uh, maintenance fee above X percent. Years 11 through 20 you can't raise it above X percent. 20 through 50 you can't raise above X percent. If they don't want to agree to that then you're the owner you don't sell. Them. That's it. That's the end of the problem. <clears throat> so if you go the other way, the reason I'm saying this, Butch isn't here and I wanted to ask him a question about replacing sewer lines. I don't think any have ever been replaced <laughs> in the whole city. So you're going into an area that you've never really gone in before. I don't think you know, we're, we're 56 years now in this type of stuff, <laughs> what you're getting yourself into. There's, there's more than 15,000 hookups in the city, you know. And the reason I come up with that number is you have 44,000 people, but the average American family has three people. You take 44,000 divided by three, that's 14,000 change, and you add the businesses to it, which is one to 2,000 businesses, somewhere in that general range. Now you're at 16,000 hookups. In addition to the main ladder, the main sewer lines you're gonna have to run through however many streets there are in the city, probably over 100 streets, I would say, you know? I, I don't think you're gonna get very far. You're gonna get five to 10 streets, probably 10 at the most, on a normal size street, whatever we can call normal, and you're going to burn right through that 29 million. So why burn through the 29 million? If you could take in 40, keep the 29, now you've got 70 million. So go from 29 down to zero is one option, or go from 40 plus 29, now you're at plus 70. Who wouldn't want to be at plus 70 instead of at zero? I'm done now. Okay, thank you. Do you have a mathematics background? It's always, it was always strong math. All right, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when we looked at either selling or leasing the sewer system, mm -hmm. uh, we had three bids. And uh, we at, when we sat down with the folks, we said, we want to uh, understand what you'd be willing to pay for leasing it and or buying it. The system's over 100 years old, the sewer systems in the city of I know. Uh, we have over $40 million that we feel has to be uh, invested in the sewer system because it is so old. It's the old terracotta. So we're looking at probably around 40 million plus to right. replace. Also with the uh, single source water and, and the other things that we have to do uh, to correct, it, it's going to be quite expensive. Uh, when I became mayor, I told the people that elected me that I'd be very open with them. I would make sure that they knew what we, our plans were going to be. And with that in mind, we sat with the, uh, the different companies, and I told the companies, I said, I'm looking, if we do approve a deal, keeping the rates as low as possible for the longest period of time, okay, the sewer rates. Um, that was a difficult thing to ask these people because naturally they're gonna make money by raising the rates. That's how they make their money. No, okay, so my intention was not to hurt the people in the city of Wilkesbury and have someone come in and buy it and then quit, you know, triple it, quadruple, whatever it may be. I, I, that's why I put that those yes. limits in there. Yeah. Year one through 10, 10 through 20, right. 20 through 50, which you didn't do last year. There was no limits that I saw in the newspaper, at least what I saw. No, year. everything wasn't in the newspaper. But what we were did do was- Were there some limits uh, on that? Were you asking them for limits or? Yes, yes we were. and. Um, when, we, you, when you put limits in it, it's less money it's, you're off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay? So if I say, look, at, we don't want, there's no way there won't be any increases with someone taking it. Sure, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. No, I know. And we said the minimal increases, it's less money we would be offered. Okay? And then we look at what's better. Is it better to sell it or is it better to lease it for 15 or 30 years? 
-hmm. Financially, we looked at both. The idea was to have the companies have a public meeting over at Genetics, have the people come out, the residents of Wilkesbury, the business owners, and hear what was presented to the wow. mayor, okay? And then I would make a decision based on what we felt was the best for the residents of the city of Wilkesbury. But that got canceled, though, right? That happened, when the COVID came, we put everything on hold. What about we, another month from now having the same meeting? What would your thoughts be on that, though? I don't think we're ready for it another month, to be honest with you. Oh, um, two and, months? And see, also, understand the American Recovery Plan monies that we received, there's very strict guidelines and limitations on what you can use it for. I can't reduce taxes, okay? I can't put it into pension plans. There's, I can't pave roads with it. There's certain things we can and cannot do. Right, that was my main concern because right. you said that. What right. you just said, I can't pave roads. Can I tell you why not? Can I tell you why that's my main concern? Go ahead. Because you said that initially last session, but say you do this, say you pave a road with 30 <coughs> roads on it, right? So now you've got 31 trenches that are going to have to be dug, one for the main and 30 hookups beyond that, right? So you got 31 cuts in the road, saw cuts in the road, and you trenched it to hook them up to the new sewer line. Of course, now you have to repay it, but you can't just right. temporarily patch that, it with that, asphalt. That's a different situation. Oh, so under that circumstance, yeah. maybe. Could that's a different that situation, now. but I can't go up, and we had a major problem with Scott Street, okay? Right. I could not use that money to pave Scott Street. In and of itself. No matter, I, I wanted to, it was the worst street in the city. Mm -hmm. We couldn't use it for that, okay? So there are limitations to what we can use it for. But my main goal last year was to publicize what was presented to myself and my administration so that the people knew what the advantages of were, either leasing it, selling it, or not doing either one. Right. Okay? So it was purely to be public and be open. I want to be open with the public. Sure, yeah. Okay, so it never happened. There were pluses and minuses to both. But once we sold that system, I no longer have control. I know. Or this council have control right, yeah. over the rates. That's right. Yeah. That's a concern I have mm -hmm. because you know they're fifty dollars now. They could be a hundred and fifty dollars. They could be two hundred and fifty dollars. I'm mm -hmm. concerned about the, the fact that the residents may not be able to cover that cost. Right, right. Okay. That's why we, you know, we knocked back the rates to, for this coming year. So it was the intention was to be very public. Everything we try to do, we try to promote public. Right. You know, the publicity of what's happening so that people can come out, come to a meeting, and hear what was presented to us by these companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only other thing I was going to say was Tom, Tom, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hope Martin, I answered your question, sir. Thank you, Mr. Brodsky. Martin Darteau, please. This is what irritates me. You see what this went back and forth, but yet I get thrown out. Martin Darteau. Not fair. Thank you. State your name for the record, Thank please. you very much. <coughs> Member of Council, Mr. Mayor, and my fellow citizen. State your name for the record. My name is Marin Darto. Thank you. It is, an, it is an honor and a pleasure being here tonight, this evening, to speak, to, to speak to you. I want to ask each and every individual to dive deep within the heart and the soul. Are you ready representing the taxpayer of the city of Wilkes-Barre? I also want to say thank you to Mr. Blesko and Mr. Mayor for cleaning up 3335 Catlin Ave. We appreciate it. If I have a question for the city attorney, are you guys going to build the individual for the laborer or using the city vehicle for the cleanup of a property? Did you notify the property owner that was claimed? Because it's five more days until Christmas and we as a taxpayer and the people committee would love to give an early present for the labor, the fee, the mileage, and the cleanup, instead of putting the burdens on the taxpayer. 
In addition to that, we are in trouble. We have a major issue, and I'm glad, Chief Coffey, I'm glad that you're ahead, because that's exactly what I was going to ask about last week. I want to thank the police for, for the quick response on the last shooting, for apprehending the individual who put the lives of the people in danger. I want you, Chief Coffey, to attend every council meeting for the people of the taxpayer and the citizen of Missouri County have questions for you. We want, we want you as a chief not only to help reduce crime, but also to educate and be proactive within the city. We don't want our city, our beloved city, to turn into baby Iraq. The people are not safe. So, Chief Coffey, why, they, why aren't there uh, enough for patrol within our city? If we look at the last shooting, I see from the long vision, the long term, that all right, we have a shooting at the, at the plaza. Prior to that was a shooting right on the Crown Chicken area, a block and a half away was another shooting at the Mofo Lounge. Don't haven't we see the pattern? It's creating that, that straight line. Then we have the, the LCTA going on the other section of the town. With the amount of gangs and the violence that is going on, it's going to get worse. And I can guarantee it's going to be a major shootout between gangs member when the new facility is placed over there. Also, how many officers are behind the desks? Those are positions that are supposed to be for the civilians. We need officers out into the, on the, in the ground, on the ground. We need boots on the ground. The shooting is enough, and the people are afraid. The majority of them cannot go to sleep. They have to sleep with a shotgun to the door. What can, what can you do as a chief? And Mr. Mayor, I asked a couple months ago for the hiring of more officer. According to a police expert, doing my research, two and a half million, no, two and a half for every 46 million, um, 46,000 people, and we only have, four, um, we only have 88 law enforcement. We need more, we need more troops. So Mr. Ch uh, Chief Coffey, can you address the people? It would be greatly appreciated to give an update as to what's going on and how can you educate the public so we can minimize. Sure, thank you. Oh, yeah. Mayor, you can do all the talking. No, I want to answer the first part, the first question that you had about cleaning up properties. You asked Councilman Belusco and I, do we charge to have the properties cleaned up? Or do we pay for that out of the city's money? When we have a problematic property, our code enforcement goes out and they verify it. Say you reported a property, uh, code enforcement would go out and verify it. They send that property owner a notice to abate. They send them a notice saying, you have so many days to clean this up. Okay, the case you're talking about, that was the backyard of, of a house. It wasn't even the front yard. So uh, it wasn't as apparent as, say, a front yard because it was someone's backyard. And I, no one wants to trespass going into a backyard. But well, we have neighbors, we have family on, that live in the residence. That, that's correct. It's, it's extremely... No, I, I agree with you. But what I'm saying is that property you're talking about was a backyard, okay? Uh, we did send notice to abate to that property owner. Once they do not clean it up or fix the problem in a certain amount of time, we cite them. We give them a citation. That citation, then they have to appear before a magistrate. And we go after the monies 
to pay back the monies that we expended to clean it up. Okay, so once we do the citation, it's out of our hands. Now it's in the hands of the, the magistrates, the judge, okay? It goes before the judge and it's determined by the magistrate how much they pay back, what they pay, if they pay anything back at all, and so forth. So we clean it up when it's not cleaned up because it may be a health hazard or a situation, like we did that, that property you're talking about. But those people that own that property received, I believe, two citations. So that means two citations that they received that they have to go before the judge for. We cleaned it up because someone dropped a blue bag back there and busted it open. So there was garbage. So we went down and cleaned it up, but they were cited twice, which means they're supposed to go before the magistrate on both uh, citations. That's how we get the money back, that we had to send a truck out to have a guy clean it up. So we do recoup the money based on the magistrate's uh, ruling and how much they, they decide to pay back to the city. So for the next meeting, well, can we have some proof or documentation to show that these people are cooperating with the citation? No, well that's, that's up to the, the judge now, the magistrate. It has to be put on his docket, it has to be assigned a date, and they have to have a hearing. So, I mean, uh, Mrs., I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Uh, Maureen, she goes to a lot of those hearings. Am I right, Maureen? That's correct, Maureen. Maureen's yes. our assistant city solicitor. So when Maureen goes, she represents the city. And, and she, she tells the, the magistrate what's, what's happened and, and why we should uh, file this citation. It should be upheld. So Maureen represents the city at several of these hearings. But Martin, what I'm trying to tell you is we don't even know when this is going to be scheduled as far as the next hearing that these people will have to appear at. That's controlled by the magistrates. You'd have to check with the magistrate's office. We don't have that information. Mr. Murray, can we be able to send information to apply pressure on these people to get things done? No, it's, how it's, with, it's, it's handled at the magistrate's office. Well, you, you go there, so I'm pretty sure you are aware of the majority of people or the magistrate, but you can tell them to push the process quicker instead no. of having a little delay. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Uh, Mr. Chief yeah. Coffey, I think we would like to hear from you, please. It's only, yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. Um, Martin, he, it, it's up to him if he wants to speak or not, but I, I'll speak on his behalf and what the police department. So we we host. He, he's, my, he's, my, the, he's the chief, though, council. He's the chief. Yeah, but this is a council. It's a protect. council. It's I know it's a council meeting. It's up to him if he wants to speak or not. But I what I want to say on his behalf is I'm very pleased with the chief personally and also uh, the community policing officer. I host a monthly meeting in my district, and either the chief or the community policing officer comes to every one of those meetings, ten a month or 10 out of the year, and uh, helps the citizens in giving them an update of what's going on in the neighborhood about crimes and then preventative things that the city is doing. So I know within my district, I hear from the chief and his community policing officer all the time. Um, but if you want to speak, it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, just for a minute. I mean, the only thing I'd like to say, listen, my door is always open for any citizen. Um, any citizen that wants to come in at any time, all the councilmen have come to me with different issues, so I'm always available. So anybody can contact me and I can discuss these issues anytime anybody wants to. Um, but you know, as far as us and how we address these things is we're very proactive. We're very proactive police department in reference to uh, gun violence and, and crime. Our anti-crime unit that we put together two years ago was very active. They have over 250 criminal arrests just in this past year. We've taken over 50 guns off the street that I can count. It's probably even more. The statistics I gather today where we took at least 50 guns off the street. Not only that, we've partnered with our federal partners, the ATF, the FBI. As a matter of fact, the FBI will actually be housed out of our building. So the FBI Safe Streets Task Force is coming to our building to help us with these issues. So um, that's what we're doing as a police department. Unfortunately for us, when it comes to shootings, it's not something we can predict. I wish I could. You know, as a citizen and a police chief, it bothers me every time I hear it. Every time my phone rings, you know, it causes me issues. But for, for us, uh, it's something you can't predict. Um, I can't answer why in society that people want to handle their disputes with gunfire. But the only thing we can do is be proactive, take illegal guns off the street, and arrest people and investigate these incidents. 
This is one of, the main, one of the main issues and right, reasons why is the please. fact that an uh, innocent bystander, there go a mother could be walking with a kid, a kid and she can get shot and killed. And it's not... No, nobody knows that more than me. That's why we're out there. That's why That's we right. have police officers out there. And we do have more officers out. We're, the mayor makes sure that we're fully staffed. Um, he's never given me an, uh, a problem about fully staffing officers. We're about five short now, but we're in the process of hiring. So we'll be fully staffed and we put as many officers as we can out on the street, just for that reason. But as far as anybody that has any problems or issues or any questions, they can come and see me anytime. So Mr. Chair, Thank you. is what Mr. Bob Kulavaski is saying is true? What? I, I, Not all the pensions and stuff, I think that's what he means. I can't hear, what did he, what? What's it, Bob's true about the pensions? This is his presentation. What he's saying is that what I brought Bob, about the about Bob, the this is not. Healthcare buyouts. Do you remember in kindergarten some of the things you learned? Pardon me? You remember in kindergarten, what are some of the things you learned when you were a little boy? Not to trust people like you. No, it's not to speak out of turn. Thank you, Mr. Darto. John Sikoski? Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. John Sosky, Almond Lane. Uh, first thing, like, uh, okay, uh, he was talking about the shooting. The, the properties like that that have multiple businesses in there, is there any way that we could have an ordinance to require them to have their own private security? Um, uh, oh, Mr. Okay, you're back there, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, what is the, uh, the criteria for how we could spend the American Rescue Plan money? And um, uh, Mr. Marconi kind of asked, asked kind of a question about the Sterling. I wanted to ask, but I wanted to kind of go, you know, go a little bit further into that. Like, uh, I, I, would we have the ability to purchase that Sterling property back if uh, we weren't happy with how they were coming along and they weren't building? So could like could we? use the buyback clause to buy that back, would we have the ability to do it and would there be an appetite to do it? That's all I have. Thanks, John. Um, requirement, private security, I don't think we could do that. It'd be nice, <laughs> but I don't think we could. Yeah, we could. Can't do it. I didn't think we could do that. Um, John, the uh, American Recovery Plan monies, uh, everything over 20,000, I have to get city council's approval. Okay, that's why I'm here today for 55,000 for the ice skating rink. And there's certain guidelines that that can be used for, like I was mentioning to the gentleman in the back of the room, uh, you know, it can be used for certain things like policing, uh, tourism, things like that. It cannot be used for tax reduction and, and uh, things like that. I can't use it for pensions. We don't have to anyway. We just, we just took care of the pension funds that are, are pretty good shape now. So it's probably a 60 or 70 page document that we were given from the federal government. And it spells a lot of these things out. And when we look at, we put this nine point plan together. I don't know if you heard of that. We're giving back $7.1 million to the people of that 37.1. Things like if you wanna uh, open up a business in the city of Wilkesbury, we're gonna help you with startup money. If you wanna purchase a home in the city of Wilkesbury, we're gonna help you with down payment and closing costs. You want to remodel your home in the city of Wilkesbury? We're going to help with some remodeling monies. Those that qualify will be able to get money to help remodel their homes. Uh, so there's different things. The social agencies that help the poor, they're going to be getting money. Uh, we're giving out those that qualify. The households that qualify will be getting a stimulus check, a $300 stimulus check. So all together, wrap this together in this nine-point plan. We're giving back $7.1 million based on the guidelines of that first set of uh, guidelines that were given by the federal government. So we had to go through it and say, how can we help the people of Wilkesbury? What guidelines are in there and what programs can we start that will benefit the residents and the business owners in the city of Wilkesbury? And that's how we came up with the nine point plan. Uh, parks or anything like that? that yeah. Yes. We will be investing in the parks with that one, yes. Okay. And one thing that we talked about doing is, um, I mentioned this to Councilman Barrett, because uh, right. Mr. Barrett has been, you know, very aware of the, the park situation, as all the other council members, the Bob, you know, and so forth. We're going to be looking at next year going out to the parks, identifying what pieces of equipment 
repaired or replaced, and we'll be working on initiating some of those things, repairing them. So yeah, um, some of that money can be used. It really def def it depends on how it's identified, and uh, we're very lucky because our team really uh, taken a lot of time and looked into what can and can't be done. Yeah, that back part of the bog would be, that'd be nice to fix those old tennis courts up for something. Well, it seems like a lot of the parks, John, have been let go, okay? And uh, they really have. I mean, we're going to be putting up a piece of special needs equipment at, at the bog, okay? And Challenger Baseball is, um, is putting up a new fence, you know? So there, there's things happening there. But also the other parks in all the, all the different five districts we're going to be identifying, you know, what needs to be, be done here. But it's very restrictive how we can use it, and that's why we identified those those nine things that we did. Okay. Okay. And the Sterling, anything? Well, as as we said before, you know, we have a couple issues with the Sterling. One is the fact that because the price of materials has gone up so much, it's increased the cost of that project. Now you have to look at financing for the increased cost. There's, there's things in development. It's going to happen. Um, it's just that it was supposed to happen this year. <coughs> Obviously, that didn't happen. So we're looking at early next year, first quarter, second quarter, just actually start. We have Spear, the other hotel that's going on downtown. We're actually working on the foundation of that building right now. So that's going to be moving along quicker than the Sterling project. Probably about 18 months that'll be completed. Okay, but. If, if in case there's any other issues, do we have the ability, would we have the legal ability to purchase that back? We'd have to reimburse the people for the money that was expended. So that, probably not because we don't, like that's a lot of money to... A lot of money, yeah. They've expended a lot of money. So I hope I answered your questions, John. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for go to the order from my colleagues? Okay, well Merry Christmas everybody. Our next uh, meeting will be the reorganization meeting where we elect the chair. That's on Monday, January 3rd. And then the next city council meeting will be a combined session on Thursday, January 13th. Okay. Merry Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.